The beautiful island of Cyprus is my homeland and the place I return to whenever I can. We Cypriots are passionate about family and food and the two so often go together. Cyprus is at the crossroads of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern cuisine. Salad. So our dishes are a fantastic fusion of both culinary heritages. Oh. Oh. Many of my favorite recipes have been passed down the family from my mother and grandmothers. But I also love to discover new recipes when I'm here on the island. Elliot, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> family, friends and food. What could be better in my Cypriot kitchen? Today, I'm foraging for wild vegetables and herbs. Nothing beats this fresh smell. It's real. To use in an ancient Cypriot pork dish. If my nose can take it, I try and milk a goat. It's uh, aromatic down this it's end. Good, good. <laughs> and use the milk to make a famous Cypriot cheese, anari. Now that's good. Today, I'm in the Bafos region of Cyprus, in the west of the island. And I've come to meet my friend George, a chef and a wild flora and fauna expert. Hey, George. Hello. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. George runs a taverna here, and like most Cypriot chefs, prides himself on using fresh local produce. We're off to his local market to buy fresh vegetables for tonight's menu, and he's also promised to make me lunch. This fruit and vegetable market is one of George's favorites. Here in Cyprus, most of our food is grown the good old fashioned way that's environmentally friendly. Look at that. Oh, look, you got a snail there. Yes, if this guy can live on this, so can we. I don't mind having a hole on my spinach um, if that guy can live on it. Yeah. yeah, you just don't want loads of chemicals. Quite right. Absolutely, Bummer. Colocasi. Colocasi. Taro root in English. Let's get that one. It is lovely and organic. We cook it with meat, with pork or chicken or lamb, uh, tomato. tomato sauce, yes, and celery and carrot, herbs and spices. Some lovely things here. Yes, and she's lovely as well, my aunt Rebecca. I love visiting local markets. It really gives you an insight into what's grown and eaten locally. This is gapari. And, yeah. go, and what would you do with a gapari? This, you take the thorns uh, off, uh -huh. and then you put it in water for five days. You change the water twice a day to get the bitterness away. Right. And then you pickle it either in brine or in vinegar. We haven't finished gathering our ingredients for George's diners tonight, though. There's one other place with produce even fresher than the market. We're heading to the outskirts of the village of Skuli, a traditional farming area 400 meters up on a hillside an area full of wild flowers and plants. But we haven't just come here for the views. George has been a fan of foraging for wild food for many years, so his customers get to enjoy fresh herbs every day. Why are you stamping your feet, George? Uh, snakes cannot hear. OK, but they can feel. But they can feel. OK, Vibrations. snakes. Yeah. Snakes, OK. So this is this is wild thyme. Quite right. But look at the thorns on those. 
It's, it's not actually thorns, they're not prickly at all. It smells so different to the time that you would buy in your supermarket. Well, Nothing beats this fresh smell. It's real. Can we pick some? Yep. Oh, it really is foraging deep in here. Yes, it is. What do we have here, George? We've got some wild asparagus we're going to pick. Where do you know where to pick them? To be on the safe side, you yeah. cut them as far down as possible, as long as it breaks. OK. Like this. This is OK. OK, give me that one. Yes. So let me and, try one. And, and, and this one. There and... Ah, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's beautiful, it's sweet. It is really sweet. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Yes, this is wild fennel. Love it goes fennel. very well with the asparagus, as we said, and with a lot of other dishes as well. It's got yeah. such a lovely kind of aniseed y little. Yes. We have a little. Oh, I love the smell of that. Shall I cut some? Yes, please, yeah. yeah. These kind of feathery leaves, you just you chop raw and stick in a salad. It's a wonderful aroma. All Hippocrates said. It's ancient Greek. Yeah. Um, your food is your medicine. Absolutely. And that's, and that's what they've forgotten today, isn't it? Right, right. And that's what and we've got to remind everyone it's again. It's preventive as well. As well as medicinal medicine yeah, through course. food. George, do you level, man? What are we looking for? Um... Wild leeks. Wild leeks? Allium ampeloprasum. There we go. It's very deep. So this is part of the onion family, the spring yes. onion, garlic, yes. that family? Yes, the lily family. OK. It is a kind of lily. There you there go. There we go. These small bulbs, mm -hmm. it's advisable if we put them back into the ground. So you'll, you'll have more leeks for next year? Exactly. I think it's time to do some cooking. I think so too. Bye, Let's go. With our freshly picked herbs and asparagus, we head back to George's Taverna. Where he's going to show me his favourite pork recipe served with the vegetables that we foraged. Here we are in George's kitchen with all our ingredients and more because we're going to be cooking. What are we cooking today? I think first we should go for a really nice joint of pork, which we are going to cook in an ancient style. An ancient recipe? Ancient recipe, OK, yes. so you get going with that. What am I doing? Use the pestle and mortar for some pistachia lentiscus, please. Pistachia lentiscus. What do we call it in Greek? Shinnos. Shinnos. I like yes. that. Shinnos. I like that. Mm. How coarsely do you want this done? Quite thin, actually. Pat These berries from the mastichi plant will add flavour to the pork. OK, I think okay. now we should go for the honey. It's actually white honey, and if you, if you see the colour, and also it's very, very dense. It doesn't flow, it's not pasteurised. Now I think we should put the olive oil on. Of course, you can't have an ancient recipe without olive oil. No, that's a natural impossibility. So, boson el yolao. Just pour, please, and just... until I say when. OK, I'm pouring. More. And where do you get your olive oil from? I make my own olive oil every year, about a tonne. So you use a whole tonne's worth of olive oil in your restaurant? Yes. Well, we you have to give quality. Any. No, I cannot sell any. I use it all here. What else are we going to flavour the pork with? I think it's time we use the wild thyme. Crumble it a little bit as well, Crumble if you like. Crumble it as I put oil. Yes. Lovely. This is looking like a gorgeous piece of pork. Yes, I believe it is. But I think it's time we do something drastic about it. Drastic? Heat. Heat. Cook, Cook it! it. <laughs> OK, so how long is this going to go in the oven for and at what temperature? About one and a half hours, mm -hmm. yes, at about 190 degrees. As the pork cooks, we fry the wild asparagus, leeks and fennel in a little olive oil. In George's Taverna, there isn't a menu. He serves whatever's fresh and available on the day. With the pork ready, George pours the delicious seasoned pork juices over the joint to really bring out the flavour. You're going to serve me my wonderful asparagus. I can't yes. wait. I feel I've earned this food. Yes, you have. These in particular, You've I earned them. You've been working them. very hard. <laughs> Galiorexi. Bon Galiorexi. Ah, yes. Hmm. This is food fit for the gods. I've had a busy day, but it's not over yet. 
George has shared his recipe and his forage food with me, so I'm returning the favour and lending a hand at his taverna. There you are, you've got some fantastic roast potatoes cooked in Cypriot olive oil, which is, of course, the best in the world. And here you have Galeftigo. One of the perks of the jobs is when you work for George, he supplies all the wine, so yamas. We have some wonderful roast kid with fresh tomatoes and we've got some calves. Don't burn. Don't burn your tongue. <laughs> If they didn't have George here telling me what to do, everybody would be getting the wrong dishes. But it's a great deal of fun. I've done the foraging, I've done the cooking, I've been serving it on the tables, and now they've got me doing the washing up. Coming up, I discover the benefits of anari cheese. Makes your face... Uh... 20 years young. Oh, give us, give us, <laughs> give us a whole lot. <laughs> and make one of my favourite healthy Cypriot dishes, chickpea and cumin soup. Every year I return to my homeland, the beautiful island of Cyprus, to spend time with my family and to enjoy the fresh food and recipes that bring back so many happy memories of life here. Cyprus is an island of so many contrasts, the sea, the mountains and different landscapes in between. Each area produces many different foods and I'm going to be making one of the well-known local goat's milk cheeses today. I'm on my way to a goat farm in Anarida, about five kilometers east of Bafos town in the west of the island. I'm off to meet Mario, who's going to show me how he milks his goats, and hopefully I'm going to get a little go at it too. We're going to take the milk and we're going to make Anarid cheese, which is a wonderful cheese. It's really light. It's a bit like ricotta cheese or cottage cheese, actually, and it's a byproduct of making halloumi. I'm a little bit worried, though, about the goat milking, because the last time I did it, I was so terrible. I got goat milk everywhere apart from in the bucket, so fingers crossed I'm going to be a little bit better this time. That's Mario. Scala? Oh, fantastic. Should we milk some goats? And nice to meet you. Come on, then, let's go. Hello, I'm Hello, I'm Ben Mesa. OK. Bravo. The things that are say, they're saying to them are so lovely. He's saying, ah, the pure kismo, come on my sweet cakes. And she's saying, come on my darlings, all to try and coax them to come out. But such lovely words. It's the type of thing you'd say to your lover. She got all the First things first, find a goat and get it in the pen. <laughs> We've got the baby in there now, so, OK. That's it. It's so uh, aromatic down this it's end. It's very good. Aromatic. <laughs> Excellent. Whoa. My milking technique seems to have improved since the last time I milked a goat. How many of you want to eat a goat? How many of you want to eat a goat? Yes, 18 years. 18 years, how many of you want to eat a goat? The goat farm is owned by Baraskevi Charalambus, and she's keeping an eye on her goats while I milk. She says she was 18 when she learnt to milk goats, and in those days they had 200 goats. She's got 30 now. How many times do you have to eat goats? Every day? Two times. So, I've asked her how often she milks the goats. She says it's twice a day, every day. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas or if there's a holiday or if it's your birthday. The goats have to be milked because if you don't milk them, the milk will, will curdle. So we've got the milk of one goat here. 
I am telling you, my arms are in agony. They are so sore. I don't think I can squeeze my hands. It's such hard work. So I've got no idea how she does 30 of them twice a day. Anyway, the next stage is that we're going to strain the milk. So they strain it mainly to get rid of any impurities. There might be the odd goat hair or something in it. That gets rid of that. Hey, Mario. Hey, thanks. I'm really excited about making an aria. I've never made it before. An added cheese really takes me back to my childhood, where I remember my grandmother, Yaya Hampu, making it for us. The cheese isn't made at the farm itself. Mario usually makes it at a hotel in Bafos, so that's my next stop. This is the goat's milk that I milked earlier. I didn't realise I'd done quite as much, but there you go. And I'm here with Mario. Mario, what are we doing? We just put this milk okay. in the hood of the halloumi places. So in here already, yeah, what, what, in the... what's in here? What's in here? The water of the halloumi. So we've made the halloumi, yeah, and the yeah, water and that's left over that's it. is in here. That's it. And with this, we're going to make? Make anari. Make anari. Anari cheese. Which is a Cypriot what? version of ricotta cheese. Ricotta, ricotta cheese. cheese or anari. You do very well, huh? Thank you very Better much. Better than me. Oh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, it's a good job that we've got a heater here because it's very really windy today. Very it's keeping good. us warm. Oh, yeah. So how long is this going to take? About half an hour. About half an half hour stirring. Half an hour stirring. You're okay, too. look, Mario, more. It's a little bit windy for me. I'll be back in half an hour when it's ready. No, I can't do it without you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> give it to me, Lena. <laughs> <and I'm> like, <laughs> Talk about working for my I'll money. Are you okay? <laughs> Too much like hard work for my liking. It's coming. Yeah, look at that. Now, from here okay. to the bowl, and sugar to... and honey Lovely. makes uh, makes your face uh, 20 years young. All right, give us, give us, <laughs> give us a whole lot. Look at it. Shake it out, OK. Anari cheese. Shake it. Okay. That's it. Seems like a lot of work for just one little thing that full. Yes, it's not expensive. It's not expensive, Actually, but it takes so much Actually, it's not expensive effort. and needs a lot of work to do. Can I have a little taste now? Of course, you can have as much as you like. Mmm. No, that's good. That was worth the effort. It starts looking younger, though, huh? <laughs> 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 yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Later on, I'll be with Mario when our cheese is put to the taste test. For now, I've returned to my villa in the village of Galavasos in the south of the island. I'm going to make a wonderfully wholesome soup that is a real favourite of mine. The main ingredient for this recipe, chickpeas, has a long history in the region and is believed to date back to the Bronze Age in Greece. This is a really simple and healthy soup. It's chickpea and cumin. First thing you need to do is dry fry your spices. You need three teaspoons of cumin seeds. A little pinch of chilli if you don't like it too hot, or a generous one if you do. Yeah, another one for luck. You can already smell the cumin. And the seeds are popping already. So once that's done, all I need to do now is add around three tablespoons of olive oil. And to the olive oil, I'm going to add a chopped onion. Once the onions are nice and translucent but not browned, I'm ready to add the chickpeas. You can either use tin chickpeas that are already soaked and cooked, or if you buy the dried ones, they need to be soaked and cooked in advance. But once you've given the chickpeas a good stir and coated them with the oil, add two cans of chopped tomatoes. Right, everything's in. I just need to add the final ingredient, which is a pint and a half of vegetable stock. On quick stir, 
and allow it to simmer for around 15 to 20 minutes while the chickpeas soften. All I need to do now is to just blitz it, really. You can have a chunky soup if you like, but I like it a little bit smoother. This blends the chickpeas with the other ingredients. And I would serve this soup with a nice, healthy dollop of Greek yogurt in the middle, some chopped coriander sprinkled on top, and not forgetting some lovely, crusty Cypriot village bread. It's Cypriot night at the Elysium Hotel. And to return the favor to Mario for teaching me how to make anari cheese, I've come to help him out at his cheese table. Well, remember that goat that I milked earlier? Well, you'll be happy to know that it's alive and kicking. And with the milk, we have made this wonderful anari cheese. I'm here, it's a Cyprus night, and I'm going to be Mario's hopefully glamorous little helper today Thank because you. we are on the cheese stall as it were and all these fabulous cheeses are separate cheeses which is your favorite mario oh, kefalo diri and halloumi halloumi cheese is the best one I'm taking over your oh, job here. Okay, come on. Thank you very much for helping me. <laughs> you do a very good job. And I'll let you slice the halloumi. <laughs> She's uh, my helper here today, just to make it a live cheese. I'm going to tempt you into this little anari cheese, which I milked the goat for this cheese this morning, so I can testify to how very fresh it is. Yes. You can have it sweet or savoury, but you've got your savoury plate there. I won't put any honey on it. It really has been a spectacularly successful evening. My anari goat's cheese is a real hit with everyone. Mariam, well, thank you very much. The evening, not over. Let's dance. Okay. Hoba, hit, hit. 